right, and if we're going to talk about our rescue jacks, just keep in mind that all of our frontline apparatus and a few of our reserve apparatus were fortunate enough to have rescue jacks on every vehicle now. Okay, so let's talk about some angles real quick. Um, when we set these jacks up, especially if we're going to lift, we want to shoot towards a 60 degree angle. If you look at the chevron striping over here, when these are parallel, we know that this is a 45 degree angle. So the manufacturer says 45 to 60. I would implore you guys, if you know you're gonna lift, I would shoot towards 60. That's just gonna get you more bang for your buck when you go to lift, all right? Um, real quick, as far as loads on these things, remember, uh, terminology-wise, I just call these things a leash, these attached little uh, straps right here. But there, there's about three factors that we need to take into account when we lift. So these jacks will extend to eight feet, and we can put 10,000 pounds on them. Uh, the, the actual strut, the jack itself, we can lift 6,000 pounds on each one, okay? So the forces that are imposed on this, let's try to keep this in mind. And I get that nobody's gonna break out their, their you know, spin their propeller helmet, helmet and their calculator out. But we gotta keep some factors in mind when we're using these. The lower the angle, in other words, the more relaxed this strut is, the more force is gonna be put down on the, the, the uh, vertical impact of the strut and then more force is gonna be applied to the leash. If I have this strap out and attached to the vehicle, um, at about a 45 degree angle, about 60% of the load that's imposed on this strut this way, axially or horizontally, or sorry, vertically, is gonna be pulling that strap this way, meaning wanting the base to kick out. So if I have a thousand pounds here, on a low angle like this, there's gonna be about 600 pounds of force trying to push the base of this strut out. So you have to keep that in mind. So these ratchet straps, I believe, are rated for 3330, so it's not a big deal. And if we're ever concerned about it, we can always add another strap or another uh, rescue jack. So I want you guys to remember that. When you're at 60 degrees, um, that force is much less, right? So 60 degrees here, um, is much, that's why this angle is much is much better for us to use, okay? So remember, six degrees, more upright, more bang for your butt. So I'm gonna take this jack off for a second, track it, and just talk about a couple of things real quick. So on truck one, these guys have them stowed like this. I know on engine two and most of the frontline engines, the jacks are stowed separately, right? It's not a big deal. The nice thing about these, what I tell guys is if I'm starting to use these, deploying these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this pin and I'm going to take this one, the one that sandwiches between the two struts, and set that on the ground next to me or put it in my pocket. The best place for it is on the ground next to where the strut's going to be. This way, when I go to use the strut, I extend it. I can extend it where I want. And then just pin the base using the same spot right here. This way, if I end up using the jack and lifting, right, I hook the base, hook it right here. And as, as I start lifting right here, once the strut starts to move, I don't have to worry about this pin being in here. We've had guys leave the pin in by accident and actually break and strip the gears inside the jack. Okay, so just remember as a rule of thumb, the strength of this uh, the load carrying capacity of this strut is the same no matter I have one pin or two. Rescue 42s, we had a big chart with how many pins versus the extension. The nice thing about rescue jacks, it's 10,000 pounds no matter how you slice it. So one pin is all you need. I recommend strongly that you just leave this pin in right here and take the other one that's down and attached to the base, set it on the ground down here. Uh, what I would use that for is if we start using the jack and we need to reposition, we have a 12 inch throw. So if for some reason we've exceeded the throw of the jack, we can pin it with this. And then we would take this out and then we can wind the jack back down and then reset it, right? So that's what I, I call it leapfrogging. That's the only time I would actually use the two pins and especially this pin. All right down. guys, let's take a minute and talk about rescue jacks and what's in the kit as far as ratchet straps and chain clusters, okay? So we have ratchet straps with grab hooks, and then we have the clamps right here. The difference between the two is actually pretty, pretty, pretty different, pretty significant. So these are rated at 3,330 pounds, okay? 
These are rated at 2,000 pounds. The difference is, look how thin this metal is. When would you use these two? So these are our go-tos, and that's why there's three of these in a kit and only one of these. So for these, you don't want to attach hook to hook like this. Um, there's a single spot weld right there in the back that when we start pulling on it, we run the risk of it coming apart. So we don't want to do that. And you always want to have these straps pulling straight across, right? So what we're going to do is if we don't have good attachment points on the vehicle, we use the chain cluster like we have here. So with the chain clusters, these are commonly used in the automotive industry as far as towing, um, car carriers, new cars coming to a dealership. So what you have is a mini chain, a grab hook, and then a T-hook. And then we have the other set. There should be two of these and two of these in every kit. And on the bigger, bigger hooks, you have the same with a four foot chain and then a big hook and another, another uh, grab hook. Okay, so when we would use these is we can find attachment points on the vehicle and use the right one. So over here, I could use it like this and change the angle, right? And then I would just take the ratchet strap and hook it accordingly versus trying to get this in a tight spot and it may not fit or it may not grab fully. Ideally, I want the work or the load in the elbow or in the crotch right here like this. Hooking it so that this is the only thing grabbing, you run the risk of it pulling out. So use the appropriate hook. The T-hook works really good for getting in a slot and then turning like I just did. And then grabbing it with this and pulling straight across. If we had a chain and I was going to pull perpendicular to this chain, we can use this all day. We can pull like this and the load is going to be tensioned that way. We can do that. If there's any chance or concern that this is going to slide, then I'm going to abandon that. That's what this is for. That's when we take this and this gets pinched in there like that. That's what that's for because this will keep from going, moving down the chain. So again, you have to factor in 2,000 pounds versus 3330. So it's all about how much force am I looking to capture? How much weight am I looking to hold? And then just doing some quick calculations and assumptions accordingly.